Brown Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. Tonight, on this fine Thursday night, we've got a good one in store between the Miami Dolphins and the Cincinnati Bengals. A strong running. <laughs> and he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. second down. Man, wasn't that long ago that the guy playing that spot was an outside linebacker type of a guy. Now, as a defensive end, how about the speed that he used to get into the backfield and make the play? Three, five, 20. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That'll go as a loss of five. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. There is no doubt that Geno Atkins is really strong and stout at the point of attack. But I love his suddenness. The ability to make plays, to be in one spot, and then he's gone. And into the offensive backfield, he's a heck of a player. And there, a big TFL tackle for loss. Hard to believe that his father, Gene Atkins, was an NFL defensive back. He's bred this big defensive tackle. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there, that's winning football. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in the old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he stopped immediately there. Only a yard on the game there, and that'll set up third and 13. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. The Bengals with two extra DBs. A nickel look on third. Bracket in the passing lanes. Now it's Tannehill. He's going to loft one deep left side here. He was looking to get it to Jarvis Landry that time. And it'll be fourth down. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Bengals take possession. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. Took a shot there on the first play, tried to start it out with a bang, but it's second down. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. Ready, 380, 380, 380. Another look for Dalton on second and 10. On the screen, Bernard. <laughs> And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Call it a gain of five. And just like that, it's third down. 
For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Well, they get the completed pass, but still have more to go here on third down. Third down from the gun, Dalton. And this is gonna be incomplete. Tyler Boyd, the former Pitt Panther, was the target. And that's gonna make it fourth down. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. The dangerous Jarvis Landry back for Miami. Now Landry. A very good return that time. 18 yards, and it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Well, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And they'll go with a ground attack here. <laughs> And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. All right, I've got to be careful here, all right? He's on the plus side of 30. There may be a little gray in the beard, but that's not slowing down his feet as far as he's concerned. What are you saying? I'm on the plus side of 30. Well, if you're on the plus side of 30, you all know what I'm on the plus <laughs> side of. All I know is that run right there let us know there's still some life in those legs. Absolutely. Still got a lot of life left in those legs. Here's Tannehill, and caught by Cameron right side. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make this a second down. And there's a completion to the tight end, and look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football, and that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, Great hand-eye coordination. Three, three, Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets it down to the 32. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Back now with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Dolphins in possession of the football. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. And they'll run it here. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Off the corner, where'd he come from? Well, I, guess, I mean, I guess he came off the corner, but really nice play. I like when you're able to pose a question and answer it at the same time. <laughs> That's exactly where he came from, but it's not something that you normally see. Most of the time, we're thinking about those guys covering pass catchers. In this case, he was a big factor in the run game. No game. And they'll go on the ground. Penalty marker is down here. And he's brought down. I mean, that was an example of why offensive linemen might want rearview mirrors at times because you have your assignments to block, but if you could see what's going on in the backfield and maybe the guy carrying the ball is headed in another direction, it might change what you do up front. But if they can't see that and he's not in sync with what they're doing up front, well, this is when you end up with plays like this, a bad one for the offense, a really good one for the defense. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll get inside the 40 to maybe the 38-yard line. He'll get three, but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Back to throw, Tannehill, and he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. 
sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Now it's Andrew Franks on for Miami. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. First and ten, here's Andy Dalton. He's got time. And he's got some space here. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. And the Dolphins offense now ready to go back out on the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. They make so many catches that are so tough, so acrobatic, so difficult, that often surprises me when they actually turn the ball over. You know, when the ball actually comes free. It's amazing sometimes because of what we see them do on so many different plays. Had the catch, but couldn't control it on the contact. Cameron Wake makes plays like that look simple because I think he plays with excellent leverage. Really does a nice job of being lower than the offensive guys trying to block him and gets underneath them and goes up and down the line of scrimmage to make those types of plays. And kept him to a short run play there. Dalton now to pass. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Cameron Wake in there to sack him for a loss of six. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. 380. Third and long. What will Dalton dial up? Finding time. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks, but doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there, and there we saw a completion. So the Bengals forced to settle for a field goal try here as Mike Nugent is out of the field. From the left hash, this from 39. And Nugent puts it through. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3-0. So after slogging through a scoreless first quarter, we have action on the scoreboard. A field goal makes it 3-0. Well, with these two offenses, we weren't going to stay 0-0 forever, were we? I'm not sure that this opens the floodgates, but I doubt that's the last scoring we're going to see. Back out Nugent now after the field goal as he'll send it away. This is taken at his four. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And out come the Dolphins now. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when okay. they only gave up the field yeah. goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved that they recoup with a score here, right? I think the coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. Well, let's switch gears for a second, Charles, because after this last week, social media was all abuzz about Terrell Pryor. He did everything for Cleveland. He caught a pass. He threw a pass. He 
rushed the football. He even played safety. And I think that not just social media having a ball with this one because he's a throwback. It was that type of a day. How about the buzz that has me going throughout the league with the players? Because there are a number of guys now going to their coaches saying, you know something? I can do all those things Pryor could do. Let me have a chance. I think he even flew the chartered flight home from Miami. <laughs> I mean, he did everything in that game. Contact. So still a full 10 yards to go here for the offense on third down. They'll give it to him right up the gun. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Here's Matt Dar now as he's on to punt for Miami. Jones on the return. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. And an encroachment penalty here will cost them five yards. And it makes it so simple, doesn't it? An easy free five yards for the offense given to them by the defense. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. They send Green to the left on his own. Hey, blue tent! Blue tent! Out of the gun, it's Dalton. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves to James. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. comes to the line now first and ten Ready. Five, 20. <laughs> they go play action here on first down surveying the field he's gonna let this one go deep he was looking for his favorite target AJ Green that time and that'll make it second and ten one thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender You've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed dagger, to get it done. Well, another look for Dalton on second and 10. He's got time in the pocket. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Passing. It's Dalton. He drops it off for Bernard. 
And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Now a play fake here on first down. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through. So a couple of field goals, that's all we've been able to muster through two quarters of play. 6-0 is our count at the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry, and on the return, here comes Adam Jones. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt, <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. And third quarter here, you've got the lead. This is where that strong run game can really benefit you. Stayed in bounds there, kept the clock going. I like all the points you just made there. And if you throw the football and it's incomplete, now you've stopped the clock and you've helped out the guys on the other hey, side of the ball. 20. So. Keep in the hands of those runners. Keep moving it. Keep grinding clock. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Takes the give to Bernard, Dalton. And that is incomplete. Brandon LaFell, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up fourth down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. A look at the offense now here, coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively, and now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Set, blue ten. Blue ten. Now a play fake, and it's Tannehill. He's got time. Going deep here for Landry. And that is caught one-handed. Oh, my, he pulled it in. It's a big play there for Miami. 56 yards. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. 
He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to lose yardage here. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Brandon, that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long. They've had no success getting things going. I think for the offensive coordinator, he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says try something different. Try some specials, something they haven't seen all day to try and get this offense kick-started. And Frank's kick is good. And they are on the board, trailing now at 6-3. to three. A decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they do inch a bit closer. Yeah, still lots of time to go in this one, take the points, move on, and let your defense try to get the ball back. Now it's Franks following the made field goal to send it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And last year that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee. And that's at the 25. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. There's nothing like getting out of the gate and finding your favorite target. Andy Dalton just did that with A.J. Green. And some people call that a nice fantasy football connection as well. Yeah, they're piling up the points that way, and they want to see that continue. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Back now in Cincinnati. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. They come up in an offset eye. Dalton gives to Bernard. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. They'll run again with Bernard. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. When the 4-3 defense is functioning really well, you know who stays what we call clean and no one gets to him? The guy playing the middle linebacker position, the guy we call Mike. That means the defensive front has eaten up all the blocks and just let him go to the football and make a play. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. He's going to be met at about the 43. A gain of three, second down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. 
But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Again, here's Bernard. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. They're trying to establish that running game, but they're really, really having trouble, aren't they? Yeah, when you're running against a really good 4-3 defense, that means you've got big guys inside who control things. Those big defensive tackles are making it very difficult to find open space. Set, 20 Third down from the gun, Dalton. Underneath, this is Bernard. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route, looks like they're going to the flat, and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside. Not easily covered. And then when they catch it, good momentum built up by them as well. And able to pick up the first. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Well, we just saw the recipe for success right there. Big body, strong, agile, playing with great leverage and hands. Not really able to be blocked on that play. Close things down inside. the action here it's a timeout it's just their first they've got two more to use here in the final stages bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Now Bernard. Oh no, he lost the football. And the now the Dolphins are going to take another time out here. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. And this one is right down Broadway. And they continue to lead in the battle of field goals here. It's now 9-3. to three. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean... You've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. Back out Nugent now after the field goal as he'll send it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. The, the Dolphins getting set to go here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> so now here come the Dolphins. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. 
But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah. the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take Blue points when you can get them. Blue not Jack. easily done. Back to throw. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Jarvis Landry, the intended receiver. And it'll be a second and long. Second down here after the incomplete pass. He'll look to throw. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. And the offense moving quickly to the line. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Back to throw. Surveying the field. The pass complete to Justin Hunter. And he's brought down after a good game. And now a first down following that long gain. Hey, five, 20, five, 20. They'll look to throw. And there's a flag on the field. On the left side, this is Stills. And that one is going to set the offense back. Well, where do you find that one in the playbook, Charles? You don't. You absolutely don't. And sometimes what happens is guys want to make a big play, and they turn it into a really bad one. Sometimes you're best just to cut your losses and go down. I hope we don't see another play like that. And I'll guarantee you the offensive coordinator, he's going to get his play sheet. He can't find it either. Yeah, big loss there on the pass completion. Hey, blue blue Tannehill. It's caught. Cameron, left side. And he is in as they have tied it late here in the final minute of the fourth quarter. And now we've got a tie game after that touchdown. And you and I both know what that means. Extra point in this situation, this little time left takes on some extra emphasis, doesn't it? It does indeed. Now inside the final minute, can they get it and hold on? Now Andrew Frank's on for the point after. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. Franks now on to kick it away after the touchdown. Now Jones. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, 
Now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. He's got time in the pocket toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Giovanni Bernard, the intended receiver out of the backfield. And that'll make it second and ten. it off for Bernard and he'll get it up near the 35 right at the 34 here give him 10 yards on the pickup and that'll bring up what looks to be a third and in inches can't be more than a half a foot surprise the defense and pick up something downfield but that one goes incomplete one score down here we go they're gonna go for it here on fourth down Ready. 380. 380. big fourth down here it's Dalton and Eifert has it and he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42 looking to speed things up here going with some tempo and the spike comes with just 12 seconds left to go. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. He's back to throw. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. It may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. And here comes play number six on this drive. throw he's got time now a desperation throw deep downfield and it's incomplete so their final drive comes up empty and with that the ball game is over 